in the not too distant future, scientists may be able to simply scan a star for Earth-like planets and find the signature of life there. We can look right at the light from a little planet around its distant star, and that opens up a whole range of possibilities for us to not just detect the planet, but to study the planet. I mean, this all sounds like science fiction, but there is a reality to this. We have a scientific method to actually determine whether there is life on another planet. Life is one thing, intelligent life, another altogether. That requires billions of years and a powerful force field like the one we owe our lives to every day. If an alien astronomer were to file a report on our home solar system, they might make a surprising observation. Because of all the eight planets that orbit the sun, they could easily conclude that two, not one, were suitable for life. It's an easy mistake to make, because the sun has two planets within its Goldilocks zone, the Earth and Mars. Both planets have surfaces warm enough for liquid water to pool on. But while the Earth is blessed with warm, liquid oceans, Mars is dry and dead. The one crucial difference between these two planets could be the key to finding truly habitable exoplanets, a magnetic shield. Our sun is constantly hurling deadly radiation out towards us. Only our magnetic shield, the magnetosphere, saves us. Without it, the solar wind would blow our atmosphere away, and without an atmosphere, liquid water could not exist on the surface. In order to have liquid water, not only do you need the right temperature, but you need the right pressure. You know, if there were no atmosphere here right now, even at the same temperature we are today, all of the water would boil off into vapor immediately. So where does the Earth's magnetosphere come from? And why doesn't Mars have one? Actually, in the past, both Earth and Mars had magnetospheres, but Mars lost its around four billion years ago, and with it, the potential for life. Both the Earth and Mars were born into a realm of violence. Asteroids smashed into their surfaces, turning rock and metal into a molten mass. As they started to cool, a solid crust formed on the surface. But the molten metal below churned as the planets turned, inducing a magnetic field, which rose high up above the surface of both planets. At the same time, active volcanoes pumped gas into the space around each planet. Protected by the newly formed magnetic field, these gases built up into thick atmospheres, creating the air pressure for liquid water to run on the surface. For over 100 million years, both Mars and Earth were warm, wet paradises, primed for life to take off. Then, quite suddenly, Mars's magnetic protection disappeared. The solar wind blew its atmosphere into space and its oceans boiled away, leaving the dry, sterile red rock we see today.